the Make Me Laugh Show. Tonight's episode, Noel tries to make Blake laugh. Here we go. Hi, Blake back here. I'm going to make Noel laugh. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Noel, you want a pickle? <laughs> Yeah, I was, uh, hey, yeah, my, I just flew in last week. Boy, my arm's tired. Hey, let's watch Ninja Turtles. Make fun of it. Because we're, uh, we're, uh, 40 year old men. Alright, not depressing talk for a while. Uh, did I mention all our girlfriends broke up with us? If I had a girlfriend, she'd kill me. Um, yeah. Standing up and stand up. Looking around, you just feel all your dreams of stardom just bursting down around you as humiliation sinks into your soul, squeezes your anus, your balls start to seize up in you, yes. you get AIDS, you get ants in your pants, I need some water, so thirsty, I forgot to shave. Anyway, uh, jokes, 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 jokes. I don't know any jokes, so just kind of dance around. Which one's funnier? The, the slow one or the fast one? The slow one. I want to do the fast one right away. Okay. One minute. 120. That's the good ones. Hey, everybody! Jesus Christ. Uh, good balance. I like to do my stretches. I like to do... I'm going to declare that the good dick is the dick. We have a band of pity now. Who knows what stand up really is? Why is it going to be pauses? Why can't I stand this way? If you're not over there, why can't I just like. Man, I flew in this week and my arms are tired. And then just wait for it. And then I like smack my ass because I'm bending over. <laughs> you know what people like's funny? Sex girls. And then uh tell you about all these girls. I wanna I wanna uh, do it to them. Get a get a book to them and stick it in. And then win. And then it's okay if you're gay. Because that way Comedy Central can see I can further their liberal agenda. Oh, Comedy Central, can I lick your goddamn cloaca? I, everyone's a Nazi who doesn't vote out Democrat. I, I'll do it. I'll do whatever you say. It'll be, it won't be creative at all. But we'll act like it is. It'll be creative. -y. Okay, so the second chick I had sex with was this really fat chick. I mean, really fat, like when we were fucking. I think she didn't wipe her puss very good because she left a fucking stain on like my boxers because I just stuck my dick out. Through the hole. Yeah, through Sorry. the hole. Yeah, and so, yeah, and she was really disgusting. I mean, like, I don't know, she might have been underage too, but you know. We'll find out someday if I have a, you know, a kid who, you okay. know, if we ever see some kid who looks just like me, you know, yeah, they will try not to laugh there. Is that what you're trying? Yeah. No, I'm trying to interrupt. Trying not to interrupt. Okay, yeah. So anyway, yeah, someday, uh, you know, you see me hanging myself, it's probably because some kid came and found me and said, I'm your dad, you had sex with my fat mom, do you remember her? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I, I probably do because I pretty much made a conscious decision not to do too much porking afterwards. Oh wait, yeah I did. I porked that one chick from Des Moines. She was hot for a fatty. She liked to do really, uh, she loves sucking cock. And she was, I mean, she had a beer gut. It looked like she swallowed a bowling ball. You know, it was just, uh, you know, she was pretty hot other than, you know, the chin. I think the chin was kind of manly. I think that's what threw me off when she would smile. I don't know. It just kind of made me, you know, want to 
you know, now it's here as well. But, um, you know, yeah, Black Arrow's very fun. So, anyway, um, wow, time flies really slow. Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, let's see, uh, third chick, is that third? Yeah, no, third chick was some pock faced chicken. Oh, she didn't suck, dick. That sucked. She had a nice ass, though. Uh, let's see, after that big gap, then became Catherine, and she liked to uh, do, yeah, she liked messy BJs. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see, after her, it was, oh, yeah, that Angela chick, whose dad is a chiropractor, whose business she worked right next door to. Yeah, she was kind of tiny titted, but, you know, she, uh, you know, rode me like a horse, so that was kind of cool. And then, let's see, you know, there's all of my hair went over here, then it was, um, um, let's see, what else was there? Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. Oh, Jesus, the best. Yeah, fuck, yeah. She looks like she's like 13, but I mean, oh, Jesus Christ, she's got, she's into some kinky shit. She's on a website called kink.com, I believe. Yeah, she sent me pictures of her new fingering herself and videos. Oh, yeah, those are some of the best. Those are fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's some shit you wish you could see, but I won't share it with you. Well, maybe if you ask nicely. Anyway, you want to see my penis, Blake? No. Are you sure? Yes. Because I'm working out right here for the camera. Yeah, yeah. Do not. <laughs> that's fucking three minutes. All right. Jeff. Space, a final frontier. <laughs> what is the funniest television show? This time we can both talk. Okay, Rick and Morty. I think Seinfeld is the greatest show ever. What about Cheers? Cheers is pretty damn good. I liked it. I thought Cheers was pretty good. But what about the automatic Bill Cosby rape joke? Uh, it's like low hanging fruit, I think. What, what about Friends? Was it just a trendy cast that looked good? Were yeah. there actually some funny moments? Remember when they had the monkey, Marcel? The, the monkey had talent, the rest of the cast, no. What about The Simpsons and Futurama? Um, Simpsons kind of peaked quite a while ago, and probably, uh, yeah, their best days are, yeah. What was the funniest Star Trek series? I'd say the original one. Uh, I can't. Uh, I would say it's the one that had Scott Bakula in it because it was a fucking giant joke. That was nobody, a giant joke, but actually it's deeper thought. That. You know what I think the funniest one was? Data and his clever anecdotes about not being human. Yeah, but you know, you still got the bang, Tashi R, so, you know. What was the funniest comic book that was supposed to be action-based but still had a good sense of humor? Anything with Deadpool in it, basically any of the Deadpool stories ever since they decided to... Uh, I, I think Gambit and Wolverine had a pretty good thing going in the early 90s. And I also liked Spawn, the dark sense of humor it had. There was no sense of humor in Spawn. It was just Todd McFarlane wanting to try to be cool or show off or something. And he's a fucking wanker. Who's the funnest la funniest lady in 80s and 90s country music? Rita McIntyre or Mary Chapin Carpenter? Katie Lang. Katie Lang. Because she's a dyke. But isn't that homophobic? No, it's what she is. She's a dyke. But you're saying it because that makes her funny? No, it's just a matter of fact, yeah. Okay, she okay. Just so making sure we're adhering to the liberal standards here on Comedy Central. No, she's what? funny because she's funny, and if you've seen her recently in that episode of Portlandia, Jesus, it looks like she's fucking... she got the way of other dykes. She's just got really What's funnier, funny. being a dyke or being a gay man? Being a gay man because dykes are mean. Who is, who is more gay deep down, a dyke that's mean that a dyke that spoke that feels bad because she's supposed to be mean but she's actually nice, or a gay guy who's supposed to be nice but actually turns out to be mean? What was the question again? Who who yeah. feels more social guilt oh, and not adhering okay. to the stigmas presented to them by the stigmaless type of people that are in Portlandia? Mm -hmm. The mean dyke who fails at being mean because she's actually nice, or the gay man who is actually mean even though he's supposed to be overly nice and femi? No, I mean anybody could be anybody, but uh, really the uh, 
Dykes want to be guys, act just like one of the boys, so they don't give a shit. So it'd be the gay men or the real. The gay feel worse because they they know they aren't as social or able to find out that they're being dicks be, when they are trying to be nice and they come off passive aggressive. Um, no, you're losing me there, but no, I don't think they feel any bad and they shouldn't. Well, it's kind of like the cunts you work with in the pharmacy department. Yeah. Who, like, are, you know, but then they have a penis and balls. But then they use their man cunt to force their cuntiness into your life. In years. But now that you can call me homophobic because I present a stereotype, you'll take the stance that I probably am some jock douchebag who doesn't understand gay people. You know what? When, I, when I, people used to, when I hear the word stereotype, I used to thought it was actually about stereos, about like, <laughs> about how it was like, um, see, I should have said that one earlier. Yeah. That was about how to read stereo instructions and, you know, make your stereo work. First time I, I heard Chris Walzine, my friend, heard fucking A, he thought his brother was frustrated with a Nintendo controller going, fucking A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. What network is funnier, ESPN or Comedy Central? Or uh, the CW. Which network is funnier, the CW or Comedy Central? CW. Which network is funnier, the CW or the CW? WGM. What network is funnier, Katie Lang or... CW? All right, thank you. That concludes our first broadcast. Yeah, other... Who's funnier? Um, vote for, um, um, Bernie Sanders in 2020. Um, his running mate will be Charlie Sheen. Who's funnier, Bernie Sanders or Charlie Sheen? Um, yeah, they're about equal on that one. That's why they're going to, you know, Charlie's going to be his running mate in 2020. Who's funnier, Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders? Donald Trump, because, you know, he's a laugh a minute. Wait, uh, we're laughing at him. I'm sorry. Who do you laugh at more? Hey, you asked me some questions. On the fly. Okay. So, what was your favorite Nintendo game? Not Super Nintendo, just regular Nintendo. Karnoff, he'd shoot fire. <laughs> he was a big, fat Russian guy. Did you ever play that one? No, I don't think I played that. The music guy. <laughs> nice. So, was that a really difficult game? Pretty easy. It was actually in the middle, and I got pretty far in it, and it got difficult as it went on. It had a decent learning or fire curve, and he'd shoot fire little fireballs in his mouth. It only go like not all the way across the screen, but maybe about uh, I don't know eighth of the screen far. So away. you gave up on the game because you couldn't get any better at it. And I couldn't find cheat codes for it. Oh, so you gave up on it. Okay, so yeah. what? I lost at that game when I was a child. What happened to that game cartridge? Did you just sell it? Did you just sell it on fire? I think I sold it on eBay. Oh, nice. Okay, remember that uh, Nintendo sixty four you left on top of the uh, Happy Chef? Yes, that was fun. That was fun, but man, I we wish poured we poured beer all over that. that. I don't regret it one bit. I do. I wish we still had that thing. So Consumerism before. and materialism takes over your life, so you never get anything done artistically. Yeah. Well, I never get anything done artistically, no matter what. So, I guess it doesn't matter. Jean Elian said, The artist must be aware of the futility of his achievement. So he's talking about Prince? The futility of his achievement, but the validity of his pursuit. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, did uh, did you ever uh, eat cat food or dog food when you were a kid? Cat food is funnier than Comedy Central. Well, yes, we all know this too. Cat food is also funnier than Comedy Central. Dog food is saltier than burrito sriracha cat food. Yeah. Especially when they're served up, you know, flaming hot at uh, Pablo's. Flaming hot. Don't be mean to gay people, but call me one. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, do you know how to play any Clash songs? I used to have Spanish bombs completely memorized. Yeah, that's a good song. Did you know that song was about uh, 
Lorca, the, Spanish. the Spanish Civil War. Yeah. One of my favorite Hemingway books is For Whom the Bell Tolls. Yeah, it's a great Metallica song too. So, uh, would you ever kiss George Kirk on the mouth if you were paid an exorbitant amount of money? Or... Yeah, I would do it probably anyway for a hundred bucks. Uh, okay, I'll keep that in mind. So, uh, George Kirk, yeah, when's the last time you actually talked with him? I just texted him an hour ago, or he texted me. Here's what he just texted me, and it's actually pretty good. First he wrote, the cliche about glass houses should be reformed. And then he wrote again, the cliche should go that people advertise themselves in a glass house by throwing stones. They advertise themselves by throwing said stones? It's pretty good poetry. Listen to it again. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? As long as George Kirk writes it down and somebody else reads it, I'm okay with it. I just don't want to have to hear his voice or see him. Noel, do you live in a glass house by throwing stones at it? No, my house is made of wood and steel and, and cement. Metaphors were made out of Comedy Central. Comedy Central is for cunts. Comedy Central should have George Kirk throwing glass stones on it. Yeah, Comedy Central should uh, do some advertising for uh, Jimmy Dean's Pieces of Shit for Breakfast. Thank you for watching. This has been Comedy Central. Well, now look at your face.